Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Rusty Rasmus will name his side to face the All Blacks tomorrow. And it's going to be interesting to see the type of side that he does name. We're going to be showing you a bit of a predicted 15-23, for example, based on some of the reports, as well as the injury updates, as well as kind of what we've seen throughout the year. And sort of give our best sort of guess as to what Rusty Rasmus might name uh, tomorrow with regards to his side to take on the All Blacks at Ellis Park on Saturday. It's going to be an absolutely cracker of a match you know these this is based in these two weeks i think is where the rugby championship gets decided because we're looking at the two favorites in in new zealand and South going head to head but both games in south africa ellis park really should be the game that the box should be targeting you win this game for example they will be well ahead of the all blast can actually probably even afford to lose down in cape town where uh, i think it will be a bit more of an even game um, in terms of that sort of that home support you do expect to see a lot more all black supporters down in cape town than you will in johannesburg um, altitude, for example, be a big factor up here, um, which the box be having been back for probably a bit longer than New Zealand should and maybe be a bit more adapt uh, to and um, also expect to see really good conditions on Saturday. Uh, conditions potentially might be a bit worse than Cape Town next week. Uh, we want to the Cape Town weather, for example, can be sometimes a bit rainy, can be a bit a little bit wet and uh, we'll wait to see exactly how it was. be the first actual international match, by the way, down in Cape Town on the new turf, uh, which should be quite cool to see. Um, in terms of the predicted team for tomorrow, um, before I show you, please do smash like on the video and please do subscribe to the channel as well. This is what I've gone with. And we're going to go through it and sort of explain some of the selections um, as well as give you a bit of an update on what's happening from an injury perspective. So from an injury perspective, Arkes Neyman is out for this weekend, so I'm also not available. So not a lot of lock options. As a result, Peter Seth Toy is expected to slot back into the second row. But... What is slightly concerning um, for the box is the fact that Ian Etzimet is also carrying a bit of a niggle. And uh, we don't really have a sort of an out, out number four within the squad. Nicholas Jens van Rensburg has been dropped in this. Generally plays more in the sort of number five jersey than at four. Um, could be an option. But um, uh, we wait to see exactly if Ian Etzimet will be named in that second row tomorrow. But in terms of the front row, a uh, report is that reporting that uh, Gerard Stenekamp is set to get a start. Um, I do think that Oxen Chair and Gerard Stenekamp are the most likely to uh, loose head options, for example. Um, it will be a bit of a surprise if Gerard Stenekamp does get a, a start. It will be his first start uh, for the box this year. Uh, he's thinking off the bench in the key game. So uh, it almost be unfair for him not to sort of play um, with, the, with Stephen Kitzel coming back in. That's kind of what I said last week. I would like to have seen Stephen Kitzel, for example. I think that obviously when Stephen Kitzel is at his best, he is one of our best loose heads. Um, I also think we've also seen how good Oxford has been off the bench, especially last year during the World Cup. But he's been really good starting. So it's an interesting one. But that is um, what uh, Hendrik O'Neill is reporting, for example, who's very, very reputable. Um, I do think Malcolm Mark's going to start next to France Mohamed. So I think that type five, for me, probably the only question mark is obviously the availability of Ennepin Etzimeth, who we expect to see named, um, but is carrying a niggle. That sort of uh, starting loose head, I think, is probably potentially sort of the question mark. Now, with Peter Steff, De Toy in the second row, I think that opens it up for Ben Jason Dixon to to start. Um, and uh, I think he had a fantastic uh, game against Australia. And I think that had he been fit, I think he would have played the second game as well. So I do think that he comes to the number seven jersey, joins Sir Khaleesi, and uh, funny thing, Jasper Visa potentially comes in. They could go with Alric Lowe, who had a very good first game against Australia, maybe a bit of a, a quiet second game. Um, but uh, Jasper Visa is fit and available. We saw him in the World Cup. He has been playing very frequently for the box. And uh, in terms of that big physical ball carry presence, um, I think that he is, you know, the most uh, physical ball carry we've got in the setup. Um, in terms of your halfback pairing, rumors that Sash Farming Gomez is going to be back, but then I think it's Kubus Ranoff will start, who's genuinely always start the sort of big games when Fife de Klerk um, isn't available. Personally, I would like to see Jaden Hendrickson when I did the team I wanted to see last week. I had Jaden Hendrickson there in that, uh, at, uh, at nine. Um, I don't think we see him on the bench. I think Grant Williams has been too good off the bench this season to, to get dropped, for example. Um, in terms of the back three, Chesney Colby, Kirtley, Aaron said, Billy Rude. Uh, I think that would be pretty inevitable. We'll have to wait and see whether Chesney or Kirtley will play 11 or 14. They kind of Swap, swap, uh, swap a lot. And then the same thing, Damon did in your partner, um, Jesse Creel. Maybe an outside sh uh, chance of the kind of I'm starting at 12, but I'd be very, very surprised if that were to happen. And then uh, off the bench, I think it will be a 6 2 split. Bongi, Manambi, Oxen, Chair, Vincent Koch. I think these will be the six, um, you know, players in the front row, basically. So, uh, six options. So, you know, whoever doesn't start will obviously be on the bench. I don't think. 
uh, we'll see a change there. Maybe Stephen Kitsar being the only sort of po other possible option. Um, in terms of the, of the the rest, I think Ruan Nokia um, will be on the bench as an option for the lock there. And then I think they'll go with Marco Fitzstad and Quaker Smith. Um, players that we have seen in the 6-2 split quite a lot so far this year. Maybe Albert Lowe, if Albert Lowe starts, you might see Jasper Visa on the bench. But, um, you know, if you've got Albert Lowe, Jasper Visa and Quaker Smith almost kind of in, in the side, then uh, it's basically having three eights. Although Quaker Smith can play across the back row over there. Then along with Grant Williams and then Honje Pollard as the two backline options. Uh, you know, we saw this against... Um, Australia, for example, and uh, I think Honda Pod does start at 10. We'll see Zach Farmer going to Zulu at, uh, at, at, at 23. So I don't think that the 23 itself there is going to be very different uh, tomorrow when he gets named. Maybe, as I said, we're waiting to see what Eben Edson has. Stephen Kitzel maybe up in with a shot. Maybe to push Lacanya. Um, I don't think we're going to see Jaden Hendricks straight away. I do think Asa Visa will be involved. Um, and I don't expect to see Money Box uh, involved. But maybe he is, you know. Money Box did play at, uh, at Twickenham last year when, when we hammered the All Blacks. So. That could be an option. I also don't think we're going to see Kaden Moody involved just yet. I think we might see him uh, maybe next weekend, probably more likely when we play against Argentina in sort of the middle of September. What changes would you make? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.